Breaking news happening right now. Court documents just released into our newsroom showing what a witness says happened before 15 year old Jaheem McMillan was shot and killed by police in Gulfport. The documents summarize statements from the person who called the police saying he feared for his life. Family members of some of the people facing charges are telling us a different version of events and we'll get to that in just a second. But here's what the witness told police. He said he and his passengers say they saw a silver Kia Soul driving aggressively through Gulfport and a person in that car waved a gun at them. The witness says he tried to escape, afraid for his life, but the car chased them through a red light at a parking lot. At one point, the witness says a person in the car put on a camouflage ski mask and uh, waved a gun at them again. That's when they say the car drove away and they called the police. After that, police say they located the car at the Family Dollar on Pass Road. 15 year old Jaheem McMillan was shot after a confrontation. The other four people in the car were all arrested, none of them older than 17 years old. Before I begin my commentary, I want to do a small disclaimer. Some of the information involved in this video may be triggering to some, therefore viewer discretion is advised. There is also some video footage and also photos that I want to share with you guys. Some of them will be blurred out due to YouTube regulations and guidelines. So without further ado, let's get into the content. 15-year-old Jaheem McMillan was killed on Thursday, October 6, 2022, in an officer-involved shooting. The incident took place outside of a family dollar in Gulfport, Mississippi. The events that led to the shooting is still sketchy. Now, some people involved in the case have another version of events. The mother of one of the teenagers now facing charges tells us neither her son nor Jaheem had a gun at all. Josh Jackson spoke with her for her story. I need some answers. They cannot speak. So my voice is going to be heard funny. Mary Spivery speaking out days after her son Kion Bell was arrested. She says he was one of five teens pulled over in a car at Family Dollar on Pass Road before an officer shot her son's friend, Jaheem McMillan. Police confirming a 15-year-old was shot in the head after an officer engaged an armed suspect. I said, so why they say that Jaheen had a gun? He was like, Mama Jaheen did not have no gun. And the phone clicked. Spivery's son is currently being held at the Harrison County Detention Center on a $500,000 bond, charged as an adult. I cannot see my son. Don't know when am I going to see him again or talk to him again. A $500,000 bond. Katrina Campbell is the mother of another one of the teens arrested. They haven't gave any evidence to say that these kids had weapons. Any. Any evidence. What so there were only two vehicles on the road that day. The car Jaheem was in and the driver in the other car. Really? Because I would think if this was going on and there were other vehicles on the road, they would have saw the incident. And being that Jaheem has been murdered and the other bars are in jail and all of this stuff is going on, you would think that someone will come forward and say, hey, I was right behind this car and I seen it too. We haven't gotten any of that. What about, did they hold up a weapon at a police officer? No, no, no one never held a weapon up at a police officer. Hey, Jaheem. Jaheem McMillan died Saturday. Sunday evening, hundreds gathering at Courthouse Pier for a balloon release. That was the last time. <laughs> I got to hold my nephew hand and it was on his deathbed. I'm so glad that all of y'all came out to help support my grandson. I can't do no more of this. I, I just can't right now. I'm sorry. We want justice. We want justice. We want justice. We want justice. When do we want it? Now. In Gulfport, Josh Jackson, WLOX News Now. As MBI continues investigating what happened on the day Jaheem was shot, many in Gulfport say they're tired of waiting for answers. Today, some people taking their frustrations to the Gulfport Police Department. Stephanie Poole spoke with them about the change they'd like to see. She joins us now live with more. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
That's right, residents across the Gulf Coast gathering here in front of the Gulfport Police Department. Now, this group tells me that they are just out here asking GPD for body cam footage and store surveillance video from the Family Dollar Store. Now, I'm going to move out of the shot for just a second so you can get a better look at what's going on. Dozens of signs with phrases, justice for Jaheem, no justice, no peace, and release the video. WLOX News has filed a public records request with the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation. That has been denied since this is an ongoing investigation. Just this weekend, friends and family held a balloon vigil for Jaheem McMillan, and people here at the rally said that they plan to continue their fight for justice. Take a listen. We don't want to guess. We don't want to put any false accusations on, on the police department. Just show us, and then no one has to wonder what happened. We'll continue to release more information on this story as it develops. But now live in Gulfport, Stephanie Poole, WLOX News Now. I'll make a comparison between these two cases. I want to compare this incident with the incident with Lyric and Devin in North Carolina. Now, I know different states have different laws. That behooves me, but I digress. Now, the boys were not initially pulled over. They were actually spotted pulling into the parking lot at the family dollar so i just wanted to get that established so they weren't pulled over okay there was not a police chase or anything of the sort next okay the incident ensued which jaheem ended up getting killed the other boys were arrested now here's the thing the other boys were arrested right then and there they were not allowed to go home for 17 days okay they were charged as adults and they had a $500,000 bond that same day. Now let's go back to North Carolina, where we have the alleged suspect of Lyric and Devin. They knew who he was. They did not release his information and they waited 17 days before he was apprehended. They actually knew who he was and they gave him 17 days in which in those 17 days, he moved back to his old hometown. You guys kind of get the comparison, like it, it just really, it really behooves me, but I just wanted to make that comparison for you guys. I hope you guys get where I'm coming from. Leave a message in the comments if you get it. Well, you know, first off for coming out here today, especially for the, for the situation that's facing our community. First off, I want to say words cannot express how I feel right now. This tragic situation has touched many lives. I understand everybody wants answers on what led up and happened in this deadly encounter. Words for me will do little to comfort the individuals involved. I will start with saying I request that the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation take over the entirety of the investigation from the charges of aggravated assault to the officer involved short shooting in order for all circumstances and facts to even be investigated by an outside agency. I will share with you now what I know. The Gulfport Police Department received a telephone complaint from a 911 caller about a motorist in a silver Kia Soul with a Georgia State license plate. The company were by several subjects later identified as McMillan, Bell, Thomas, Ellis, and Cooper. They were brandishing firearms at passing motorists and began chasing one of them. This occurred in the area of six, Highway 605 and Magnolia Street. This description of the vehicle is passed along, along with the tag information, is distributed to our officers through the Gulfport Police Department Communications Division. The Kia Soul was located in the area of, or the intersection of Pass Road and 8th Avenue as it was entering the Family Dollar parking lot. Two officers and two separate marked units entered the parking lot behind the vehicle. Immediately, two, ve two individuals exited the vehicle and began to flee. Officers exited their vehicles with loud verbal commands, giving, uh, giving them instruction to stop fleeing. One of the officers observed McMillan, who was armed. The, uh, the officer gave chase to McMillan, or I'm sorry, gave orders for him to stop and drop his weapon. McMillan did not comply. McMillan turned both his body and his weapon towards the officer. The officer fired at McMillan. McMillan was struck by the bullet and fell. The same officer then turned his attention back to the vehicle. He observed one of the vehicle occupants outside the vehicle and another one exiting. 
The officer ordered the suspect to the ground and he complied and laid on the ground. The suspect was later found to have a weapon in his waistband when he was taken into custody. The other individual still in the car was ordered to exit the vehicle and lay on the ground. He also complied and was taken into custody. The, the suspect that fled north that was pursued by the first officer was tracked down by canines. He was located. He complied and he was taken into custody. A firearm was found clo in close proximity to him. McMillan was transported to a local area hospital, suffering from a single gunshot wound, and was Lady airlifted to an out-of-state hospital. Correct me if I'm wrong, a headshot is a shot to kill. Could he have shot him somewhere else? There are lots of stories in traditional and social media on what transpired on October 6th at the Family Dollar at 8th Avenue and Pass Road. Many of them are simply wrong. People are posting and identifying our officer Lieutenant Brian Watson, as the officer that was involved in this incident, along with the address, photographs of him, his family, and his children. Let me just say this, he has nothing to do with this. For the record, the doxing of any innocent individual is a no-no. However, it does appear that he's more upset over the doxing than the actual murder of Jaheen. I could be wrong, proceed. He was in fact out of state when this occurred. I respect everyone's right to freedom of speech and to protest. This simply is a malicious attack on a family for no reason. And no basis in fact, these actions are inexcusable. Mississippi law is now clear as of July 1st that the Attorney General's office now has jurisdiction in cases where officers use deadly force. The Gulfport Police Department is cooperating fully with the investigation. The Gulfport Police Department also conducts its own internal investigation to violations of its policy. If any are found, it will be taken into consideration and it will be... Like seriously? Are you okay, sir? It will be... Okay, Chief, keep going. Mm -hmm. I have turned over all evidence, radio traffic, 911 calls to our dispatch center as well as all dashboard camera, body cam footage from this event. I've been assured by the Attorney General's office this will be a timely and thorough investigation. The evidence will be released, as always, upon its conclusion. And that's all I have to say. Although the footage from the officer's body-worn cameras have yet to be released, Protesters have acquired a surveillance footage that shows the Gulfport police officer who shot McMillan on October 6th acted without cause. It clearly shows McMillan took three and a half steps from that Kia Soul, three and a half steps to a death sentence, said Jacob Blake Sr., whose son Jacob Blake was shot by a Kenosha, Wisconsin police officer back in 2020. Cooper said McMillan turned toward an officer with a weapon in his hand and the officer was forced to fire. Cooper also said McMillan had also refused to drop his weapon after he repeatedly commanded him to do so. However, demonstrators have contradicted the police department's account of events. Some witness accounts say McMillan was unarmed with his hands in the air when he was shot. Protesters say they have video surveillance that will prove this. Tonight calls for justice for 15-year-old Jaheem McMillan growing louder. Just hours ago, a group gathering outside Gulfport's police department demanding action. Josh Jackson is in the newsroom now with the latest. Josh, you were there at this gathering. Yeah, that's right, Hugh. The shooting death of 15-year-old Jaheem McMillan gaining more and more national attention recently, including Black Lives Matter, just weeks after the 15-year-old died. As the investigation continues, one group making strong accusations today. Dozens gathering on the steps of Gulfport Police Headquarters. He fatally shot Jaheem in the head without cause. There was no legal reason for him to have his firearm out. So now we are here to demand justice. We are here to demand accountability. We are also calling on the resignation of Chief Cooper. Gulfport Police Chief Adam Cooper saying earlier this month, MBI is handling the investigation. Public Safety Commissioner Sean Tindall later saying the investigation needs to be completed before videos are released. Say his name. Say his name. And we don't need the tape. We've seen the tape. 
Supporters of the Macmillan family and Black Lives Matter saying they've obtained video that doesn't line up with what the chief said in a news conference just days after the shooting. Yeah, the officer gave chase to Macmillan, or I'm sorry, gave orders for him to stop and drop his weapon. Macmillan did not comply. Macmillan turned both his body and his weapon towards the officer. The officer fired at Macmillan. Not at any time will we accept a chief of police to get on television and make up a series of allegations about a child and not have any proof to back it up. We are relieved to know that the family has retained the services of Ben Crump, which will be handling it for the civil matter. But, but as far as the criminal matter, we are specifically calling on the Department of Justice to issue an arrest warrant for this officer. As the public waits for police video and area surveillance footage to be released, a family continuing to grieve, preparing to lay the teen to rest. I'm not going to see my grandbaby no more. I'm not going to be able to go to his graduation, no birthday. He's not going to come over for the holidays no more and tell me now that this food show is good. And according to leaders at the press conference, the video that maybe that they have obtained rather is scheduled to be released to be released. I was asking them how soon it could be released and I've been told that it is imminent. The acquired surveillance footage shows McMillan running from an officer, said Florida Pastor Carl Soto of Black Lives Matter Restoration Park and Family United for Justice. The footage came from a business across the street from the family dollar where the incident occurred. Jaheim was running for his life. He was scared. He was running because the officer jumped out with the gun already pointed at him. The officer started chasing him down and fired his weapon at the same time. Soto also said the officer could have used a stun gun because the incident happened during business hours with bystanders in the line of fire. Another thing is, after Jaheim was shot fatally in the head, he was then handcuffed while he laid lying on the ground bleeding to death. Bystanders tried to help and aid Jaheim, but the officers, he didn't even try to help Jaheim and he also held the crowd back from coming up to help Jaheim as well was killed earlier this month after an encounter with police there. Those who knew him questioned the investigation as law enforcement agencies are remaining tight-lipped about it. Mike McDaniel takes us to Gulfport. As family and friends walked into the Lyman Community Center in Gulfport Wednesday, all I did was cry. Jayla Ag knew it wasn't going to be easy. When I walk up in there to see his body, it's going to hit me hard and I'm not going to be the same. A.G. had dated 15-year-old Jaheem McMillan. She saw him just weeks before he was shot in the head by a Gulfport police officer October 6th. McMillan's funeral was an emotional one. He was, he was there for me a lot, and I was there for him. And I hate how they just took him from me and everybody else like that, because, like, it just happened out of nowhere. Gulfport police say McMillan and a group of other teens were pointing guns at cars. When officers approached them right outside of a family dollar store, police say McMillan was ordered to stop and put down his gun. McMillan did not comply. McMillan turned both his body and his weapon towards the officer. The officer fired at McMillan. I'm black and I'm proud. Since the shooting, there have been protests calling for transparency from the Gulfport Police Department and the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, which is handling the case. Family and friends don't believe the police account and want video released. We're just trying to get the truth. And the truth is on the footage, the police body cam and the store dollar, uh, family dollar. Questions of what exactly happened have spread across social media with calls for justice and scrutiny. Wednesday, though, was a day to focus on the memories. He was a nice and caring person. He always made us laugh. Tears could be seen across the community center as overwhelming support surrounds Jaheem's family. With standing room only, his classmates and community activists joined his family and friends to pay their respects as well as demand justice. Long Live Jaheem was printed on t-shirts to keep the teen's memory alive. On October 6, outside of a family dollar store, Gulfport police fired their weapons, hitting and killing Jaheem. Since that shooting, protests, memorials, and social media posts have called for justice and accountability from the department. I have one son that's an Army Ranger, and if something should happen to my son, he's in the U.S. Army, I don't know what I'd do. And I just know this situation here, it's, it's a hurtful feeling, because I only have one son. So I'm asking the community to come together, please. We need to be here for the young men as well as the young women. And this is a day that we all need to come together.
The incident is currently under investigation by the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, which is standard protocol for officer involved shootings. It was unbelievable because like, why? Why would you do something like that, especially to a child? He was only 15, still had a life ahead of him and you took that away from him. Four other teenagers were also arrested in this case, charged with aggravated assault. We did reach out to the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation for more information on this case or to see when more would be released. As of Wednesday afternoon, we had not heard back. Reporting from Gulfport, Mike McDaniel, Eyewitness News. After the shooting took place, Shaheen's mother, Katrina, was notified and she immediately went down to the family dollar. Katrina said once she entered the scene, she observed her son, Jaheem, lying on the ground with a gunshot wound to the head, bleeding out, and he was also handcuffed. As she approached Jaheem, she was also taken down herself and handcuffed and escorted across the street. But she just stood there crying and screaming because the police officer did not try to aid Jaheem, nor would they allow anyone else to get close to Jaheem. The next video footage I want to add is right before Jaheem was taken off of life support. This is a plea and cry out that his mother made. Tonight after a police shooting in Gulfport, his mother tells us he's brain dead and on a ventilator. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Cherie Skipson. And I'm Devin Bartolotta. His family and friends protested today, calling for justice. Eleanor Tabone has the story from Mississippi. The latest is that he's no longer with us. 15-year-old Jaheen McMillan is clinging to life. They shot the kill because the way they were shooting, they shot him in his head. His mother, Katrina Mateen, says after Thursday's shooting at Family Dollar, her son was airlifted to a mobile hospital. He's going to be on the ventilator. I'm not going to take him off. I mean, I feel like he's got a chance and I'm not going to pull the plug on him. You know, he can come back maybe and if he can, I'm, I'm going to give him that chance. Gulfport police say they received reports of people pointing guns at passing cars. This afternoon, we responded to this area for a 911 call advising there's individuals pointing firearms at passing motorists. They gave a description of the vehicle and the subjects inside. We located this vehicle at this intersection here at 8th Avenue and Pass Road. We made contact with the individuals. They then fled from the vehicle. One of our officers engaged with an armed individual. Shots were fired. He was taken to the hospital. The suspect was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound. Chief Cooper stopped short of saying an officer shot the 15 year old, deferring to the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation. We reached out to MBI. They could only say the shooting is under investigation. I haven't talked to anyone. No one's contacted me. When I got here yesterday, they handcuffed me and, and walked me across the street. Police say a total of five people are in custody. A mother of one of the other suspects is fighting for her child's freedom. The children have been charged with aggravated assault and they have a $500,000 bond. Police say several firearms were recovered at the scene. They told him to turn around and put his hands on top of his head and once he did that, he complied. They, they just started firing. Gotcha. And then after he was shot, they actually handcuffed him. Keep continuing praying for my nephew and my sister. And I just hope he pulled through. As tears pour for 15-year-old Jaheen McMillan. <laughs> Eleanor Tabone, Eyewitness News. Shaheen's mother, Katrina, was notified about the incident after the shooting. She ran down to the family dollar store to see what was going on. And when she approached the scene, she noticed her son was lying on the ground with a gunshot wound to the head, and he was also handcuffed. As she ran closer to help Jaheem, she was also taken down and handcuffed. Now, Katrina and Jaheem were no strangers to law enforcement because a few months before this, Jaheem did also get into it with another official and he was busting the mouth. And here's a picture of the injury from that incident. My heart goes out to Katrina. For as a parent myself, I could not imagine how she felt having to stand across the street in handcuffs, watching her child lay motionless on the ground, bleeding from a gunshot wound to the head in handcuffs, and an officer standing directly over him, not rendering any aid whatsoever, and not allowing any bystanders to help as well. And then to add insult to injury, once Shaheem was taken to the hospital, he was then airlifted to another hospital in another state due to his critical condition. Once Katrina and her family members arrived to that hospital, initially they were not allowed to see Jaheem. As a parent, I could not imagine how she felt, and I would not wish this on my worst enemy. 
I understand that during active investigations, there is certain information that cannot be released to the public. But the business across the street from the Family Dollar, they did give the surveillance footage to Jaheen's family, and they were able to see just the opposite of what the officer said. So my thing is, if you feel like it was justified on your part, why not release the video footage just to kill everything so we can move forward? I guess the police department was not expecting the family to make it to that business before they did. See, the family went to the business and they were able to show them the surveillance and the surveillance showed a different set of events. But you all know, if the police would have made it there first, that surveillance tape would have been missing. Today, Jaheem McMillan will be laid to rest. The funeral for 15-year-old will be held at Lyman Community Center. Yeah, McMillan was shot and killed by a police officer outside the Family Dollar on Pass Road in Gulfport nearly three weeks ago. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who is now representing the family, is expected to attend. And since McMillan's death may have called, many have called for police video and area surveillance video to be released. We're now hearing from Gulfport's mayor about this ongoing investigation. Mayor Billy Hughes is calling for patience as this investigation is continuing. The reality is, the speed of justice does not coincide with the speed of social media. I get it. I guess you weren't expecting the family to make it to that business before you guys were able to snatch the surveillance footage, right? I get it, sir. Keep deflecting. One of the most distinguishing differences between the quest of some in social media and the press and those in the criminal justice system is the burden of proof. We owe it to ourselves to allow the system to work for the truth we all seek. Hughes also expressed his support for the Gulfport Police Department and Police Chief Adam Cooper, who he says has been unfairly attacked on social media. It's apparent to me that Gulfport Mayor Billy Hughes and Chief Adam Cooper are more concerned about what's being said about them on social media than the actual fact that a 15-year-old boy by the name of Jaheen McMillan has been killed at the hands of one of their fellow comrades. Make it make sense. I would like to send my condolences out to Jaheen's family. No parent should ever have to endure the loss of a child, especially under these circumstances. I know that nothing can be done or said that will bring Jaheen back. However, if this wasn't justified, then justice should be rendered for Jaheen and his family. I will never understand the officer's actions because Jaheen was shot in the back of the head. And with that alone, no video footage is needed. The truth will come out and justice for Jaheem will prevail. Please leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please be respectable to everyone. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions. Please love on your loved ones. Tomorrow isn't promised. Until next time, peace.